You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. This is Where You Live with Gene and Tony. We're broadcasting from the Natural Green Lawn and Landscape Studios. We're brought to you by Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. As an American Family Insurance agent, Kim believes that there's much more to insurance than the policy itself. It's about providing you with dependable protection and services. Kim believes that trust and credibility can't be demanded. It can only be earned by what you say and what you do. Call Kim at 651-482-1598 and tell her Gene and Tony sent you. It's time now for a message from the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association. The MHA Minute is brought to you by Start to Finish Maintenance Contractors. Start to Finish provides 24-hour service for all of your home and business maintenance needs. Call Start to Finish at 952-259-1219 for your home, for your business, for your peace of mind. Did you know that the top reason renters do not renew their leases is not because of rent increases? The biggest complaint among renters and the most important gauge of renter satisfaction is how the management responds to maintenance requests. Responding to maintenance calls quickly and effectively makes for happy residents. Happy residents make for reduced turnover. Reduced turnover makes for better cash flow. That's just one of the hundreds, thousands of things you can learn from the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association, the best, most comprehensive resource in the state for owners of everything from a duplex to hundreds of units and for townhome and condo associations as well. MHA holds 135 different classes each year for owners and on-site staff, including in-depth certification courses for maintenance and management professionals. In fact, the most widely recognized certifications for apartment industry professionals across the United States were designed right here in Minnesota by MHA. Find out more by visiting mmha.com. That's two M's, mmha.com. Well, Gene, we're talking about this political fight in, uh, is it Oceanside? Oceanside City. In California. Even though homeowners know they're in the wrong by by pushing for the city to pay for the streetlights in their association, the homeowners are willing to misuse the power of the vote and vote off city council members that won't do what they want them to do. And again, I guess I would like to point out that this is a clear case of bullying. Ah, yeah. You know, pure and simple. That's what it is. It's someone throwing their weight around saying it doesn't matter what's right. It doesn't matter about who's responsible. And again, if you believe in personal responsibility, you, you're not quick to throw everything onto someone else's shoulders. That's right. You take it on yourself. And so they're saying, and this is the real interesting, I guess, backstory, if you will, uh, to, uh, to this uh, article and that is, it says that the Oceanside City Council uh, right now uh, breaks in favor of a three-man neoconservative pro-business majority. There are two seats um, that are up for election uh, that are uh, with the more conservative faction, and those are the those are the two city council people up for re-election. The other two seats on this five uh, five city council. Uh, a board here are people who are considered moderate or liberal. Okay. And so uh, they say that uh, you have people who are conservatives who believe in personal responsibility and, but maybe changing their tune because like you said, there are people who will rationalize. I mean, a lot of mm-hmm. politicians mm-hmm. rationalize, and they will give a good reason for the real reason, and that is, well, if I give in here, uh, I'm going to uh, be able to create a greater good because I'm going to stay reelected, I can still and I'll serve. be able to serve and do sure. and do sure. greater things. Isn't that better? And it's the conservatives that are up for re-election. Typically, I would, but you know what? I don't care, conservative or liberal. Yeah. If you're gonna agree to the rules we're operating under, then you have to uphold contracts. Yes. Don't you? Shouldn't you uphold yeah. contracts? No. And now th- this is different because you know a lot of times you, if you don't give in on things, I guess there's another perspective here that says okay. you know, I mean, you need to be able to 
work together and compromise. Okay. I mean, because that's how you move to get things done. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise there would be a constant stalemate but in then all you're, you're talking about a compromise among the council members. Yes. Right. But th- but this case, this is... Uh, Caving. This, this is, uh, or selling themselves out, Yeah, you know, to be able to justify yeah. getting reelected here. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see what happens and, and what they do. But again, like I said, I, I put a, a bunch of responsibility on the association here. Y- you know better. And yeah. you know what the other crazy thing in all of this that nobody has brought out in this story or seems to come to realize, and that is when you say, I'm not going to pay for this, the city is. <laughs> you know where I'm going with it. I do. Who is the city? The yes. city is made up of homeowners. Yes. If you're a homeowner in an association and you say, I'm not going to pay for this, the association is. What is it that you're really saying? You're saying all my neighbors have to pay for this for me. Yeah, they're they're all going to chip. They're all going to chip in. Mm-hmm. But then, for you to say that there's not any responsibility that's going to come back on you, guess again. Mm-hmm. I mean, as far as I know, in every city, every time you have an improvement along a roadway mm-hmm. that the city is taking care of, uh, curbs and sewer and lights and all of that. Um, that affects property taxes. Yeah, it does. It does. You're right. It's, it's assessed to the people who yeah. live on that street so, or live on that road or who benefit yeah. from that improvement so you're or gonna, that repair. You're, you're, and so in one sense, you're going to be paying this either way. That's right. All you're talking about is do you have the personal choice to uh, take care of what you want? Or are you going to let someone else do it for you? you that's know, what that's what's going to happen here. They're they're, they're saying, no, um, we're not going to take, uh, we're not going to have the ability to have any input now or choice because because we're saying I need to be taken care of by someone else. And when you say that, every time you say I need to be taken care of by someone else, whether it's a city or a state, what you're giving up your right, your ability to personally choose what you do in your life. That's absolutely right. Yeah. That's absolutely right. We talk to our kids the same way. Kids, if you want me to pay for that new car, then I'm going to have something to say about what happens with that car, right? If you want me to pay or if you want to live at home until you're 35, Okay, but I'm going to have something to say about how you behave while you live here, right? Yeah. I That's mean, the same with your government. If you're going to insist that your, that your government or your neighbors pay your way or take care of you, you're giving up your ability to object, to have an opinion, uh, to have any control over yeah. the situation. Yeah, like I, I believe it, I was attributed to Thomas Jefferson, said it many times, the go- he, I think he said the government that's large enough to give you everything you want <laughs> is also large enough to take it away. Yes. And uh, if, again, if anybody would know and understand this idea of <laughs> responsibility, it would be a homeowner association because you would think they so. are dealing with it in their community. They're operating within their budget in how their property is managed month in and month out. You'd think that there would be some understanding here, but uh, it's very disappointing to see uh, what amounts to some political bullying. Yeah. You know, saying, yeah. give me what I want. If not, then we're going to make sure that uh, we're kick you're you out. out of office. I, on- I only hope that there are enough other people in Oceanside City who will say, you know what, um, uh, we're going to uh, allow those people to be... We're going to support our we're council. Gonna su- we're yeah. going to support them, especially if they do the right thing and say, mm-hmm. you know what, an agreement is an agreement. And that is the other basic thing. We're talking about a contract. That's right. A contract that nobody had a gun to their head. That's right. Everybody had the opportunity to say, I am going to agree to this contract and here's how it reads. I'll be responsible for these things, mm-hmm. and the city will be responsible for those things. Mm-hmm. And we have that understanding, and we act. And now all of a sudden they, they want to say, I want to change that now because 
uh, I don't think it's fair. Why? Because uh, it doesn't feel that way now It's not anymore. fair because it happened to me. Because it happened to me. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't want to pay. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it is really unfortunate when uh, something like this happens. It'll be interesting to see what happens, whether the uh, city council at uh, Oceanside City cave in or whether they uh, yeah. stand their ground. Well, that's all the time we've got for today's show. Thanks for joining us. We've had a great time. It's been great to have you with us. Have a Super weekend, everybody, and we look forward to having you here next Saturday on Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Well, goodbye. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care now. Bye-bye, then. <laughs>